On August 23, 1942, in a letter to his friend, Sergeant Otto Bauer wrote, In the morning I was shocked by a beautiful sight for the first time through fire and smoke I saw the Volga, calmly and majestically flowing in its channel. We have reached the desired goal the Volga, but the city is still in Russian hands. Why do the Russians stubbornly hold on this bank? Do they really think to fight on the very edge? It's madness. We hoped that we would be back in Germany before Christmas, that Stalingrad was in our hands. What a great delusion. That city has turned us into a crowd of unfeeling dead men. Stalingrad is hell. Russians are not like people, they are made of iron, they don't know fatigue, they don't know fear. Sailors, in the bitter cold, go to the attack in calfskin coats. Physically and spiritually, one Russian soldier is stronger than our whole company. Russian snipers and armored gunners are undoubtedly God's disciples. They spy on us day and night, and they don't miss. For 58 days we stormed one single house. We stormed in vain. None of us will return to Germany unless a miracle happens. And I don't believe in miracles anymore. Equipped with the most modern weaponry, the Russians are hitting us hard. This is best shown in the battles for Stalingrad. Here we have to conquer every meter of ground in heavy fighting and make great sacrifices, because the Russian fights hard and fiercely, to the last breath. And Sergeant Walter Opperman, in his letter to his brother in November 1942, characterized Stalingrad as follows. Stalingrad is hell on earth, Verdun, Red Verdun, with new armament. We attack daily, and if we manage to take 20 meters in the morning, in the evening the Russians throw us back. When we came to Stalingrad, there were 140 of us, and by September 1st, after two weeks of fighting, only 16 remained. Everyone else was wounded and killed. We do not have a single officer, the command of the unit was forced to take on a non-commissioned officer. From Stalingrad every day up to a thousand wounded are taken to the rear. Our losses are considerable. Machine gunner Adolf in his letter complained to his mother that, in the daytime you can't show yourself from behind the shelters, otherwise you will be shot like a dog. The Russian has a sharp and accurate eye. We were once 180 men, only seven are left. There used to be 14 machine gunners, now there are only two. If you had any idea how fast the forest of crosses is growing, every day many soldiers die, and you often think when will it be your turn? There are almost no old soldiers left at all. In the letter of the soldier Paul Boltz there were also lines like these. Yes, here you have to thank God for every hour that you stay alive. Here no one escapes his fate. The worst thing is that you have to wait without complaint until your hour comes. Either an ambulance train to your homeland, or an immediate and terrible death to the netherworld. Only a few God-chosen lucky ones will safely survive the war at the front near Stalingrad. I was in a large cemetery where about 300 German soldiers lie. From my company there are 18 people buried there. And such large cemeteries, where buried exclusively German soldiers, are found almost every kilometer around Stalingrad. It's hell here. Wrote at the end of November, Oberfreutnant Joseph Simak and companies there are barely 30 people. We've never experienced anything like this before. Unfortunately, I can't write you everything. If fate permits, I will tell you about it someday. Stalingrad is a grave for German soldiers. And the number of soldiers' cemeteries is growing. And here's what non-commissioned officer Joseph Schaffstein wrote in his diary. December 2nd. Snow, only snow. The food is disgusting. We are hungry all the time. December 6th. Portions still reduced. December 8th. Food is getting worse. One loaf of bread for seven men. Now we'll have to switch to horses. December 12th. Today I found a piece of old moldy bread. It was a real treat. We eat only once when food is distributed to us and then we starve for 24 hours. November 22nd. Russian tanks come around us and attack us from the flank and rear. Everyone is fleeing in panic. We make a 60-kilometer march across the steppes. 
Russian tanks and Katyushas attack us everyone escapes. December 6th. The weather is getting worse. Clothes are freezing on the body. For three days we haven't eaten or slept. Soldiers prefer to run over or surrender. Yesterday we received vodka. At that time we were just cutting a dog and the vodka came in very handy. In total, I have already slaughtered four dogs, and my comrades can't get enough. Once I shot a magpie and boiled it. December 26th. Today we boiled a cat for the holiday. This is simply indescribable horror. Herman Trepman wrote in his diary on November 23rd in the afternoon we were incredibly bombarded by Russian planes. We have never experienced anything like this before. Not a single German airplane in sight. Is this called air superiority? November 24th after dinner there was a terrible fire. Our company has lost half of its personnel. Russian tanks are driving around our position, airplanes are attacking us. We have dead and wounded. If we lose this war, we'll be avenged for everything we've done. Thousands of Russians and Jews shot with their wives and children near Kiev and Kharkov. It's just unbelievable. But that is why we must exert all our strength to win this war. There's real panic in Gumrak. From Stalingrad there is a continuous stream of cars and wagons. Houses, food and clothes are being burned. They say we're surrounded. Bombs are exploding all around us. Then comes the message that Kalik which was captured by the Germans, is again in the hands of the Russians. As if 18 divisions are arrayed against us. Many have hung their heads. Some are already saying that they will shoot themselves. Returning from Karpovka, we saw units that were burning clothes and documents. December 12th. Russian planes are becoming more and more daring. Firing air cannons at us, they also dropped time bombs January 5. Our division has a cemetery near Stalingrad, where over 1,000 men are buried. It's just horrible. The men now being sent from transportation units to infantry can be considered condemned to death. January 15th. Last entry in diary. There is no way out of the cauldron, and there will be none. From time to time mines burst around us. How wonderfully we could have lived if there hadn't been this damned war. And now we have to wander around this horrible Russia. And for what? When I think about it, I'm ready to howl with annoyance and rage. From a letter of Oberlutnant Arno Beats, December 29, 1942. Often you ask yourself why all this suffering, has mankind gone mad? But you should not think about it, otherwise strange thoughts come into your head, which should not have appeared in a German. But I am saved by the thought that 90% of the soldiers fighting in Russia think about such things. From a letter by Sergeant Albrecht Aden on January 1, 1943. And here is an excerpt from the diary of the liaison officer, Oberleutnant Jürgert Rumpfing. January 15th. The front has collapsed in the last few days. Everything is abandoned to its fate. No one knows where his regiment, his company is, Everyone is left to his own devices. The supply is still poor, so the moment of defeat cannot be delayed. In recent days it happens like this we are attacked by six or nine bombers with two or three fighters. No sooner do they disappear than the next ones come out and drop their bombs on us. Each car carries two or three heavy bombs. This music is heard all the time. At night it seems as if it should be quieter, but the humming doesn't stop. These young men fly sometimes at a height of 50 to 60 meters, our anti-aircraft guns are not heard. Ammunition is completely used up. The pilots are firing from air cannons and sweeping our dugouts off the face of the earth. Passing through Gumrak, I saw a crowd of our retreating soldiers, they are weaving in a variety of uniforms, wrapped in all sorts of clothing, just to keep warm. Suddenly one soldier falls in the snow, the others pass by indifferently. Comments are superfluous. January 18th. In Gumrak, along the road and in the fields, in and near the dugouts lie German soldiers who died of starvation and then froze. 
In our battalion only for the last two days we lost 60 men killed, wounded and frostbitten. More than 30 men ran away. Ammunition remained only until evening. The soldiers for three days did not eat at all. Many of them had frostbitten feet. We faced the question what to do. On January 10th in the morning we read a leaflet in which the ultimatum was printed. It could not but influence our decision. We decided to surrender to save the lives of our soldiers. As Martin Gander said at the interrogation the ultimatum given to Paulus was a lifeline thrown to us by the magnanimous enemy. And when the Lieutenant Joseph Schwartz read the ultimatum, a burning anger at his generals boiled up in him. Apparently they decided to kill us for good in this damn place. Let the generals and officers fight their own battles. I've had enough. I've had enough of war.